Uh, speaking of nightmares, uh, I know there's not a ton to say here, but before we get out, we need to at least touch on uh, Syracuse basketball, which um, seems to look a little worse every day now. Uh, Jim, any any thoughts here? Well, I didn't watch the game. I did was cracking the score while we were courtside in Canadagua, and I'm glad I didn't watch the game. You yeah. you were actually watching a better game than oh yeah <laughs> gave up ninety to an, another team. It's just it's what happened now three times at least three 96. times this season. Getting up, it's just not something I'm used to for Syracuse basketball. You know, Georgia Tech back. is not a good team. No, they were big favorites too, especially at home. You so know, five or six about nine. games under five hundred. Um, and so losing a game like that now puts Syracuse in jeopardy of having a losing record, yeah. which um, you know, in Bayheim's. 40 years of coaching, it's only happened once. Now it's going to potentially be twice. Very well could be. So it's, uh, Paul, what do you think uh, the answer for Syracuse is? You know, heading forward into the future. Not this year. This year is a piece of crap. What so, about so what yeah, about the future? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refrain from doing a full, full-on rant here to a degree. But for me, everything, especially yesterday, started in the afternoon when the game gets flexed off of TV locally. Like, what, what are we, like, what's the point of having Wild Hack be the athletic director, a former ESPN guy? The if, ESPN guy. If, if that happens. Like, I've, I've been over Wild Hack here for a while. I, I don't think he's going to change anything anyway. I don't know, man. Point. I disagree with you there. But, we, uh, football program's in a good trajectory, and that's a really – difficult uh prospect for syracuse football in the acc up here in the northeast and then we've got a soccer national championship men's soccer just won national championship girls lacrosse programs national championships in recent history and and contenders this year um i think overall that he does a good job but the basketball program is obviously horrible I, mean, I, I don't disagree, I guess, with any of that. It's just that in the spots where he needs to step up and be the guy, he has not been the guy yet. And, you can't you know. be too pleased with the way the football season yeah, is. I, I'm I, sorry, I, but I, like I, I, you I'm, can't you can't look at that program and say, oh, things are we're going the right direction. Well, they went to a bowl game. Uh, yeah, but if you're going to a bowl game that doesn't mean yeah. anything. Well, then, everybody goes to a bowl game that mean, doesn't mean anything except for you know basically four teams, right? It'll expand. But I mean, is the goal not to get there with that program? Like, if so, we're saying that the I mean, way like the, that fe- the football goal. program yeah. can be a success is if they that. get into the BCS playoffs. Which, That's kind of unrealistic at this point. Which is, uh, you know, when you're competing against um, schools like Alabama and LSU and Michigan. Right. Um, I would love to be there. Yeah. And I think that there can be outlier seasons where we're in the picture, but. Um, you know, Syracuse University is just not a football school anymore, sadly. Um, it, it's hard to – it's it's tough tough not to crack, and that's one of the yeah. problems with college football is, you know, that really after a month into the season, there's only – if you think that a national championship is the barometer for being success, right. then out of the hundred and so, you know, Division One football programs – there's only three or four that matter. Yeah, I would probably say three, even before the season starts, I think there's probably between three and four teams that can, that can win the national championship that year. And you know that before you even kick the first ball off. But that's just kind of how college, the college football landscape is right now. I mean, I mean even if you're going to get to a place, though, where you're ranked in the top 20 consistently yeah, for a span of, you know. That's a little bit more. I mean, being a, I guess, on the ranked ranked side or even just outside of it, tops of the ace, in the tops of the ACC, maybe not the top, but. I think that's a good goal and an attainable goal. Hey, this year, winning record. Yeah. And, you know, one of the barometers that I look at are are the games entertaining, um, exciting. Do you, are there something to look forward to when Clemson comes to town? Do we feel like we can beat them? Right. Um, I had talking? a great time at the NC State game. That was Wait, really fun. Wait, are we talking football? Football yeah. ended up at 6-7. and seven. Yeah, they had losing season. Oh, they lost the bowl game. That's right. But. You have to be more than a Bowl heartbreaker. Eligible, you can't just be like a, you can't just be a heartbreaker program and hope to be like a spoiler to a team that's actually on like a like a top ten, top five national title contender kind of run. Like if you want to have a program that means something, which I mean I feel like that's got to be the goal. 
you, you it can't just be like, well, we're not mediocre. We're not just so absolutely different awful. Football. It's just it's so hard to have those big expectations when you're not, especially if you're not in the South. I feel like that changes everything too. Isn't that just Syracuse? Uh, I, I you have to have you have South to have somebody at the helm who believes that it's possible, though, even if it's not possible. Yeah. Well, even if we're going to admit that it's not, <laughs> like no, I believe it's possible, but it's an outlier season. So this season was setting up to potentially be that. Although I think that even um, the biggest Syracuse fans, when we started out six five and zero, oh, five and zero, oh. um, you know, knew that it was unlikely that they were going to end up in the BCS playoffs. No, I mean th- nobody from the ACC was getting in this year. I mean, the minute Clemson showed the fact that they weren't going to be what we've seen from them the past handful of years, it wasn't going to happen. But I mean, at the end of the day. It, you start five and zero. Oh, you end up six and seven, and especially after what I mean, we talk about this year being an outlier. I mean, talk about the outlier that is twenty eighteen, where they were ten and three, and got as high as twelfth in the poll at one point. I mean, yeah. I, it's it's whatever. I I think we kind of deviated from really. What, what I like Dino Babers, before, but, and I I comfortable with where the football program is right now. Garrett Schrader's coming back next year. Um, you know, we'll try it again. Yeah. Try it again. But the problem with college football, it's also the thing that makes college football great if you're a fan in of one of the bigger programs or you like important early season games. But, you know, once you lose a game. So if Syracuse loses one game, they're not going to win the national championship. Correct. If Alabama loses one game, they still got a chance. But if they lose two games – you probably not, but even Alabama still has a chance losing two games, right? Or right. Ohio State. Yeah, it depends on all the other teams do, right? Right. But if a team like Syracuse or Pittsburgh or Boston College um, or Northwestern, or, you know, could go on Oregon State, you know, if they lose one game, it's over. Yep. So I would, you know, you know what really needs to happen in college football to give programs like Syracuse a chance to – not be in that situation is to um, expand the playoffs to 16 I teams. I was going to say that yeah. seems like it. That's it, happening. Yeah, but that actually seems inevitable at this point. Like yeah, that's, I hope they so. already decided, they already but decided that's going to happen. You need to have a program at that point though, that can like be in the mix of that. You don't have to be in that top four discussion. Like you well, probably in that never case, will, you don't, like, you can get in and you can go on and run in the postseason. I mean, yeah. Syracuse has proven over the past 10 years that they can beat top ranked teams in the country they by upsetting clemson um a few years ago mm-hmm. um playing tight with teams you know like florida state uh and you know the even earlier on in the year they were beating team you know purdue was pretty Shouldn't be clemson this year highly ranked yeah and and that's the other frustrating <laughs> thing too is like it seems like it seems like the ACC does not want Syracuse to beat Clemson, so it seems like we don't get those calls in those close games. It's like we're already climbing uphill in an already difficult situation. But you're right. If the playoffs were 16, then Syracuse could suffer a loss and still be in contention. I don't even think it needs to be six. I mean, at that point, you could, like, 12 – and you've got a reasonable chance you're going to have a, a share of one loss teams and no, more makes, the merrier 16s yeah. even that way you can you know everybody you know four games to win the playoffs more football's always teams. good we always love more Welcome, football no complaints there hey <laughs> that is going to do it for this edition of finger lakes today